So as you all might know, my favorite X-Men is Gambit. But I already did an episode on Gambit, so let's do an episode on my next favorite mutant, Multiple Man. So join me as I tell you everything you need to know about Jamie Madrix, the Multiple Man. Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. So I felt it was a good time to dive into Multiple Man. Seeing that there's going to be a movie starring James Franco uh, about Multiple Man, as well as a brand new comic series coming out later this year. And weirdly enough, the most popular video on my channel has to do with Multiple Man. So uh, let's finally dive into why I love Multiple Man so much. So Jamie Madrix first appeared in Giant Size Fantastic Four number 4 in February of 1975 and was created by Len Wen who also created Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Colossus as well as a huge pantheon of other characters. Although classified as a mutant, Jamie is actually known as a changeling or a kill crop which is an offshoot of mutants that get their powers at birth rather than in their teenage years. Uh, other known uh, changelings are Gambit, Nightcrawler, and Hope Summers, all were which born with their abilities. The way Jamie's powers work is that he can multiply himself through impact on his bodies. Um, so if you were to punch him, more would come up and just attack you even more and it's this unwheeling army of duplicates as he calls them, or dupes. Um, he can also spry these by either snapping his fingers, stepping on his toes, you know, minor things that would injure him uh, will also create a duplicate. And these duplicates are, in, are fully sentient beings. They have their own minds, they can create their own decisions, uh, they're not just mindless drones, they are actual other people. The dupes in of themselves can also create other dupes, but they tend to have a little bit of problems doing that. Um, on top of just duplicating himself, he also duplicates his clothing and anything he's holding at the time. Now since his power is triggered upon impacts, he usually wears a special suit that helps deton kinetic energy forced upon him to help control his power a bit. That way, you know, just every time he brushes against somebody, it doesn't create another duplicate. On top of all that, when he absorbs his dupes, he gains any experiences or knowledge that they have, and he can also use them as a minor kind of healing factor as he can kind of absorb their health and make himself healthy. Um, he can absorb them by either touching them or it's kind of debated but when they die he can also he can't absorb them but he does regain their memories and um, you know experiences and skills uh, which is kind of a really cool power if you ask me. But let's get into the actual uh, history of Jamie Madrix himself. So Jamie was born in New Mexico to Daniel and Joan Madrix, uh, both uh, very highly regarded doctors. And they discovered his ability pretty much right away when the doctor smacked uh, Jamie's ass and created a second Jamie. So they told this to Professor X who was a friend of the family and he advised them to move to Kansas to raise him in secrecy since, you know, being a mutant's not that cool at this time in uh, Marvel's history. And when in Kansas, his dad created the first iteration of uh, his kinetic absorbing suit uh, that he uh, now wears even to this day. At age 15, his parents died in a tornado, uh, but Jamie continued to live on the farm and use his dupes to kind of work and maintain the farm up until his suit got damaged. Uh, once his suit was damaged, he uh, goes to Mr. Fantastic to help repair his suit. Uh, when he does see Mr. Fantastic, Mr. Fantastic introduces him to Professor X, who Jamie at this time has never actually met in person. Uh, Professor X advises Jamie to go live on Muir Island with uh, Moira McTaggart and to help study his powers and help with other mutants. 
While living on Mirror Island, uh, Jamie teamed up with Havoc and Polaris to help find a missing mutant named Proteus who can possess other people and use their bodies. Uh, after this adventure, he was asked to join the X-Men, but Jamie declined and offered to just stay and help at Mirror Island. Of course, this would end up kind of biting him in the ass because uh, Mirror Island was later destroyed by the Shadow King. Um, upon the destruction of Mirror Island, uh, Jamie joined the second iteration of X-Factor, which was a government strike force made up by mutants to help with mutant problems. And this is when X-Force Volume 2 kicked off, which was written by Peter David. So quick note on Peter David. Uh, he actually did not want to use Multiple Man for X-Factor. Uh, he just didn't really care for the character, but it was kind of forced upon him, and upon writing him and getting to know the character more, he actually really enjoys him and has since said that it is one of his favorite characters. Uh, which kind of leads to um, that Peter David really developed Multiple Man to where he is today. So as Yondu might say, Len Wynn might have been Multiple Man's father, but Peter David's his daddy. So the, uh, this iteration of X Factor was made up of Havoc, Polaris, Quicksilver, Strong Guy, and Wolfsbane. And the series ran from 1991 to 1998 and had many adventures going on. Uh, one of the more uh, interesting ones is uh, Jamie was actually exposed to the Legacy Virus, which the Legacy Virus was this um, virus that only infected mutants and had pretty much a 100% mortality rate. So it was kind of like uh, you know, the mutant equivalent of AIDS during the 90s. Uh, and Jamie actually ex was exposed to this and w died for the first time. Because comics, you never die just once. But it did turn out that was just a duplicate of Jamie, and Jamie was, of course, somewhere else with amnesia, because of course he was. So eventually, when the government strike force disbanded, uh, Jamie joined a, a team known as x Corps who was put together to be a bit of a police force for mutants. So they wouldn't just respond to crisis, they would actually, you know, go around and patrol and be, you know, an actual police force. Um, and this was made up by Husk, Jubilee, M, Radius, and Sunspire. Um, of course, this team didn't last very long and eventually was disbanded very quickly. Uh, once the team disbanded, uh, Jamie moved to Mutant Town, which is a small part of New York, like Chinatown, but for mutants. Uh, when he got there, he released a ton of his dupes out on the world to learn different skills and traits and all sorts of fun different things, uh, which would eventually bite him more in the ass than he would think, because they like to pop up randomly and uh, be in weird spots. Like he had one that uh, became a priest and had his own family. Uh, he had one that was a shield agent that um, was on the wrong side during Civil War. Or right side, depending on which side you took. And he had one that was an Olympic athlete. So, uh, very, uh, very odd thing, but it gave him a lot of skills which he could use. Once he acquired all these skills, he decided to put together a detective agency, which I know you guys all know about because you watch all my videos, and I talk about this in my very awesome series known as I Have Issues. You can click here if you haven't seemed to watch it for whatever reason. But uh, I go over this version of X Factor a lot, which is known as X Factor Investigations. So if you are curious to get a little bit more knowledge about that, uh, check out my series, I Have Issues. I go really in-depth in that. Uh, but he decides to put together a um, detective agency uh, and joined up with a lot of his partners from former teams, uh, Strong Guy, Wolfsbane, M, and Siren. The main point of the detective agency was to discover the main reason for the decimation. Which I might have to go over again for you people who, <laughs> who haven't been watching I Have Issues. So, uh, Decimation was the fallout of House of M. House of M was when the Scarlet Witch lost her mind to create a new reality where mutants were the dominant species on the Earth. Um, when that didn't work out, she decided mutants were the problem in a reverted reality, but killed most of the mutant population, decimating the population. 
and they were setting out to find out why this happened because at the time it wasn't known knowledge that the Scarlet Witch did that. Uh, so the team set upon doing that as well as uh, having other adventures and other things which again you can see on my series I Have Issues which you should check out they're real fun. During the Messiah Complex event which uh, was an event that happened when the first baby mutant was born since the decimation and became this whole problem where all these people are going after her to kill her or to save her and all this fun stuff. Uh, Jamie sent a dupe into the future because uh, Cyclops wanted to see if she truly was the Messiah and what the future would look like. Uh, so knowing that once the dupe dies, Jamie would absorb his memories, they sent a dupe into the future to find out what happened. Uh, and while the dupe was going through the portal, Layla Miller, who's a character within uh, X Factor Investigations, jumped in the portal and went to the future with him. And they soon discovered that this future is this apocalyptic future where all the mutants are in concentration camps and the population is even further decimated than it currently is. Um, and while they're in the future, Jamie and Layla were actually caught and sent to one of these concentration camps. And they were given the M tattoo, which you've seen uh, in a lot of pictures of Jamie, as well as uh, Bishop, because this is Bishop's future. Uh, but this is a very special mutant tattoo that will still go with you if you change forms or, you know, things like that. Or in Jamie's case, all his dupes will now have that M tattoo over their face. And, um, you know, that's where he gets that M tattoo that you'll see in a few pictures of him. Or in my very awesome cosplay, because I like to cosplay as him. So once they had all this knowledge, uh, they had to, you know, get back to the past. But Layla was stuck there in this terrible future. So uh, what she decided to do was to steal a grenade from a guard and blow up herself and the dupe. Uh, giving Jamie all the um, all the experiences of uh, what that dupe saw and kind of ended her life getting her out of this terrible future and it was this very gut-wrenching sad moment and uh, was incredibly surprising and a crazy moment in comics if you ask me one of like I, I was totally blown away by this so X-Factor Volume 3, or X-Factor Investigations, ran from 2005 to 2013 and had uh, a crazy bunch of adventures and is one of my favorite long-running series. And that's why I talk about it on I Have Issues. I, I just love it and I want to share my love of it. Uh, but one of those uh, kind of adventures uh, was Jamie Had a Son. So Siren got pregnant from Jamie. Uh, unbeknownst to both of them is actually a duplicate of Jamie that impregnated her. Um, and it was a bit of a drama going on, but uh, she did have the child and uh, when Jamie went to go hold his child He actually absorbed him and in a sense killed him uh, finding out that if his dupes have kids if he touches those kids he will absorb them and It was again a very poignant Sad moment within these comics. It, it's very well done uh, but incredibly jarring <laughs> to say the least so near the end of the series Jamie is killed by a uh, demon known as bloodbath but instead of just killing him it sent him to all these different realities so he saw his death a whole bunch of times and uh, different futures different pasts a uh, really crazy series and finally comes back and marries Layla Miller um, who of course died before but comics it's a long crazy story of why she's back I'll get to it in my other series, but it's a crazy thing. And so he eventually married Layla Miller. And that's where he stood for a very long time, uh, until the Death of X series. The fairly recently, um, Marvel had a, an event called Secret Wars, which was meant to uh, not really reboot the universe, but kind of simplify the Marvel Universe, as well as tie in the Ultimate Universe into the main series of... Uh, the regular Marvel Universe and create this whole crazy thing. Um, so when that happened, uh, they, they did this thing called the Death of X, which was kind of this prelude to what would eventually become X-Men vs. Inhumans. Because they were trying to promote the Inhumans TV show, but no one liked that show, and it was a dumb idea. But anyways, in Death of X, um, 
Jamie gets exposed to the Terrigen Mists. The Terrigen Mists are mists that inhumans go through that give them powers. He was the first to find out that the Terrigen Mists were harmful and would kill mutants. And unfortunately, Jamie was the first to find this out. And that's where he currently stands right now, is Jamie Madrix is dead. Um, which is interesting because they have the new series coming out, so it's curious where they're going to go with this. So Multiple Man is also known outside of the comics. Um, most of you might know that he had a role in X-Men The Last Stand, where um, they didn't misrepresent him, but they underutilized him. Where he was basically used as a, uh, you know, set piece for one scene, and that was about all they used him for. So unfortunately, I mean, he was in the movie, and they did a good job casting him. I thought he was pretty okay. Uh, but yeah, they didn't really do a lot with him. So. Okay. I give up. He was also in one episode of the X-Men animated series when the uh, X-Men uh, uh, fought the government-sponsored X-Factor. Go on. Take your best shot. It's your face, pal. What's this, a two-for-one sale? No, it's more like a baker's dozen! He also appeared in the second season of X-Men Evolution, where he was the youngest student to join uh, Professor X's uh, gifted school, and uh, stuck around for quite a bit. Uh, and he was also appeared on one episode of the highly underrated uh, series, Wolverine and the X-Men, uh, where he fought uh, Cyclops and it was uh, one of uh, Sinister's Marauders. Uh, so he has been used outside the comics a bit, and as mentioned before, he has an upcoming movie starring James Franco, which I have very high hopes for. So that's a brief glimpse into the entire history of uh, Jamie Madrix, the Multiple Man. I absolutely love his character. He's funny. Uh, he's witty. Uh, he, he's got one of the coolest powers, if you ask me. If you could duplicate yourself and send yourself off to work or off to work out and then you absorb them and gain all that, oh, that's, that's a fantastic power. So much can be done with it. Uh, but really, it's how his character is portrayed and used. I really love Jamie a lot. He, I just lo He's a great character and I really hope, again, that movie is great and I'm looking forward to the, the new series coming out. But I hope this gives you a little bit of uh, interest in Jamie Madrix to find out who he is, what he's about, and, you know, gain a little interest for my show, I Have Issues. Yes, I'm going to keep vlogging that. Uh, hit that thumbs up if you uh, like this series and hit that, and, you know, leave me a comment if there's a different character you want me to cover. I have ideas for other characters uh, to do a study on. Um, but yeah, that's Jamie Madrix. I really love him. So until next time, I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, or am I? What if I'm just a dupe? What if you're just a dupe? What is reality? <laughs>